is allow us to connect deeply to nature so we can grow our own buildings in ways that are magnificent shapes, that clean the air, that generate their own energy. Hello everyone. In today's Material Minds featurette, we go over to the Engineered Living Materials Conference. What are engineered living materials? Well, they're materials that contain living organisms within them. Living microorganisms most often, things like bacteria, fungi, mammalian cells, algae, that are engineered to do specific functions that normal non-living materials wouldn't do. For example, having concrete that can heal themselves when they crack, or making membranes that grow themselves and trap viruses in the environment, or certain types of medical devices that can deliver drugs within the body uh, in response to a disease condition. Yeah, there are many different possibilities with engineered living materials, and that's why we've organized this conference. We've got pioneers from all over the world, experts from all over the world, people who are pushing the boundaries of the field. And in this feature, we ask them questions. We ask them a few questions about the field, and let's see what they say. Here we go. What's one thing you think people unaware of the field would find most fascinating about engineered living materials? Um, and one thing that people are unaware of, I think generally, is the degree to which we are swimming in bacteria already and how um, close and similar the ELM, the microbes in ELMs are to ones that we're already very familiar with. This is just the beginning. The engineered living materials are just the first time we're able to use proteins and cells for engineering applications. And this is just the start. There's uh, the future. In the 20th century, technology was driven by physics. In the 21st century, technology is gonna be driven by biology. And engineered living materials is the first example of that. Um, one thing that I think people unaware of ELMS would find most fascinating about is how powerful they are and how much potential that they have that's still unexplored and I hope will uh, be discovered in years to come. I think like people that are unaware of ELMs would be most fascinated that they can use microbes, bacteria, fungi, which are usually related to, path like, to pathogen. Uh, say that we can get a lot of from them, we can harness like all their power for our own benefit, for our humanity uh, benefit. So yeah, I think how the amount of benefits are not well understood yet for the, the whole like population. And I think most of people aren't aware that we can actually control cell functionality, including how they assemble in uh, three-dimensional space, forming new structures and how this like structures and, and cell activity can actually be repurposed for something that can be very useful. Uh, I don't think people realize that engineered living material can have application in healthcare and agriculture and have a significant potential uh, to improve our lives. And I feel like very strongly about that because I come from a uh, genetic engineering background and I think making people aware that we can engineer self for good, it's an important message, especially after the pandemic where it seems that there was a little bit of this connection between science and the general public. So I'll use this opportunity to convince people out there that engineer living material is a brand new science that can really make, uh, provide exciting application for everyday life. One of the things that's most fascinating about it is the ability to take these individual cell types, cells that have function that we can build in the lab and actually put them in devices that we can use in the real world. So this could allow us to do a whole bunch of things such as sensing different diseases right off your, of your skin, monitoring things in the, in the oceans and in the environment, um, building new sorts of chemicals and new sorts of chemical plants to make the materials and the compounds of the future, and a whole host of other things that I think is really exciting. To me, it's really the potential. So I'm not a natural scientist, and I'm drawn to this field because of the futures that it makes possible. So imagining that my table can heal itself if I scratch it. Imagine that I might be able to take a probiotic that actually truly heals me rather than leads me to need to take more and more medicine. Um, the potential to actually grow whole building systems that can eliminate themselves, that can adjust to their conditions and become stronger over time. All of that to me 
is really exciting because it allows us to actually create the way nature does rather than constantly be chasing the unintended consequences of our actions. So I think that potential of a future where a whole bunch of problems we're burdened with today simply go away. And of course, that is also carbon and toxicity and moving to a circular economy. All of those things are made possible by this very promising emerging industry that I hope more people get excited about. And for me, is that we've been doing it for a long time already. We just now have the ability to engineer at the scale which we think engineering is. For me, I come from agriculture and I feel I've been doing ELM for quite a while. It's just now the movement is finally reaching that synergistic energy and we're really seeing results. So you can go out and do your own ELM just by playing in the park. And I am especially fascinated by all the applications that are um, that were presented here at this conference concerning sustainability, um, especially um, new building materials and also different kinds of, of textiles, uh, which can be used as alternatives to the current one. If engineered living materials were a superhero, what powers would it have? I would say that engineering uh, life would actually have the ability to live also in outer space. So these uh, synthetic cells that we work on should be able to withstand radiation, low and high temperatures, environments that maybe lack uh, liquid such as uh, water. And I would really want them to be able to live in outer space, providing life all out there in the galaxy. I would say telekinesis, which is very difficult to uh, achieve but uh, you never know. You know, uh, science has always surpassed its expectation. Uh, we never knew what it was 50 years ago, but we are still here breaking up protons and electrons to you know, find out more and more and, uh, about science. So I would al always expect something uh, drastic and futuristic in terms of uh, superheroes background, yeah. If engineered living materials would have any kind of superpower, I would give them the superpower of shape-shifting, since they're very versatile? Uh, mine is not exactly a superhero, it's more a fairy tale, so it is a sleeping beauty. Uh, so we've been really excited about using uh, bacterial spores recently, and the fact that we uh, can keep that dormant for very long periods and then uh, germinate them whenever we want to bring a functionality into the material. So I would say a uh, sleeping beauty. <laughs> and I would say it would have the powers of an elf. It, it allows us to connect deeply to nature so we can grow our own buildings in ways that are magnificent shapes, that clean the air, that generate their own energy, that switches on light when we need it and switch it off when we don't need it, that allows us to cool the buildings when we need it and heat them up when we need it, all using the power of biology. I think it would um, self-heal. It would grow and last. And it would enable us to already grow products into shape and free us from our dependency of fossil fuels. I think they would be super healers because you can create therapeutics with them. Um, they are also super strong because you can build houses with them, for example. And um, they are also super energized because they can create their own energy. Uh, for me, if uh, engineering living materials uh, were superheroes, it would have uh, powers like uh, being uh, uh, super resistant, immortals, uh, able of producing uh, interesting uh, molecules on, uh, on demand. And uh, of course, like uh, every spray hose, uh, able uh, to kill uh, the bad guys. Uh, one of the things that's been really fascinating to me is the um, ability of engin some engineered materials to self-heal. And so I think if engineered living materials were a superhero, it would be able to regrow any damage that was ever done to it. And, and do it rapidly, and that would be an amazing um, superhero uh, skill. That's it, thanks. What's the most surprising or exciting thing you've learned about engineered living materials at the conference? Okay, the uh, most surprising 
thing that I've learned at this conference is about uh, Qi Ming Tan's gels in cells, which are able to uh, remain bioactive without dividing. That was pretty cool. One thing that I think many people would be find fascinating about engineered living materials is that you have feedback between the living component. We know cells and living organisms change as a function of time, but the materials can change too. And then together, they change in ways that I think are totally unexpected. So the living component can talk to the non-living component and the non-living component can talk back, creating systems with really hard to predict properties. I'm very excited about the different versatile applications for engineered living materials that range from medical applications to even sustainability problem solutions. For example, we can create living materials that can help us uh, with different sustainability problems in urban areas. However, we need to be aware that different living materials are actually living, meaning that it is not so easy to engineer them and we really need to collaborate to make sure that we can come up with most uh, impressive solutions. During this conference, I was impressed to see how the field of engineering living materials is growing. It's so exciting to discover so many materials uh, that surpass existing capabilities that are able to sense their environment and in turn to deliver the adequate uh, response. So the, uh, the one thing which is exciting about ELM is uh, definitely how, how vast its possibilities are. Definitely in terms of how uh, uh, like living organisms, it may be a fungi, it may be a bacteria, how they can be engineered, that excites me a lot because you can, if you can engineer them, you can control a lot of its ability and use that same functionality to develop very advanced material for the future. Uh, so the most interesting thing that I learned, uh, I guess, was today uh, during the talk about cyanobacteria and the co-cultivation of uh, algae with fungi, since I'm working with fungi. Uh, so yeah, very exciting new perspectives of uh, different new co-cultures to associate different uh, organisms' properties for material applications. Uh, so, what's the most surprising and exciting thing I've learned about engineering living materials at the conference? I think it's that uh, the science of engineered lingual materials is really advancing very quickly. I think also the reflection point of the scientist to see where the applications are and how to get into the applications area is really prominent right now. So um, I'm really looking forward to the next conference to see how far the field has been uh, developing. And also I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I'm really impressed of the really constructive and positive community spirit that the LM community has been developing and keeping the past years. Yeah, so the most exciting thing for me I've learned on this conference is um, about biomineralization. Um, this is a new topic for me. So I'm working with a uh, fungal composite material and I really like um, the new material properties um, which um, arise from yeah, embedding inorganic material in like organic um, materials. I think here it was a lot about uh, bacteria cellulose and yeah, I'm actually uh, really happy to, uh, to explore it more um, um, with fungi actually. If you could collaborate with anyone here, what kind of engineered living material would you create? I've seen some people here have like these amazing uh, work on like 3D printing all these kind of tubes and chambers into various structures. So I'd love to collaborate with some of those groups so that our microbes that make materials can get in and amongst those chambers and make the materials in that kind of way that we have these patterns and structures in three dimensions. I would like to make ELMs that function like an artificial uh, microbiome, so they co-evolve with uh, the person that they are on to benefit both uh, the host and the and the microbial community. I think that the, the, the exciting thing about ELMs is their versatility and how very different fields can be addressed with ELM. I think that we have seen that uh, ELMs are responsive to uh, external chemicals or light or other type of stimuli. I think the, the future, the exciting future in building that collaboration would be to have ELMs that are truly responsive to the properties of the environment and respond to it so that they are not triggered by external stimuli, 
but the, depending on the application, whether these are environmental application or biomedical application, as in my case, we can the, the ELN can read the properties of the environment and be responsive and transform the environment based on this self-contained information. Because I'm a polymer chemist, I would love to collaborate with a, with a materials approach background as to how to, uh, how to infuse ELMs within polymer and uh, develop a more sustainable future, uh, futuristic products, which I think is of high demand. I was always fascinated by the microfluidics and what it can do. And because we're very interested in kinetically trapped polymeric system, I think it could be really interesting to collaborate with this microfluidics lab to create kinetically trapped structure and then confine bacteria in a very unique way and then understand how their biology is different from free-floating cells or simplistic gels. So that's what I would like to do.